3D is actually very straightforward. And if you've ever done dot to dot as a child, then this course and 3D is going to be an absolute breeze for you. For this first section, there's no need to follow along, and I've turned off the screencast keys, which tell you what I'll be pressing. We'll put those back on later. But this is intended only to give you a general overview of how 3D works, because I think it's easier to learn if you've got some sort of context. We will get a sneak peek at some of the Blender features, but it's not important that you remember them, because we're going to cover those later on. So 3D is a bit like dot to dot, because we've got our dots, our lines, and then the bits we colour in in between. And in 3D, these are called vertices, edges, and then the bits you colour in are called faces. Now the difference between a 2D dot to dot and a 3D dot to dot is the third dimension. So we've got X and Y, similar to a piece of paper, we've got only two dimensions, across and then up and down. But we've also got the third dimension, so if I rotate this now, you can see that as well as the red and green lines, we've also got the blue line, which indicates the third dimension, in this case, Z. And now we can move any of the elements in any of the three directions to create the shapes that we want. So these different 3D elements, vertices, edges, and faces, belong to a mesh. So I'll just come out of full screen view so we can see the Blender interface. And we have a look, we'll see that we've got the object, the pyramid object, and an object is just something that's used to position, scale, and rotate, and also modify whichever mesh is currently assigned to be used by this object. Currently, this object is using the mesh called Pyramid Mesh, but if there's other meshes in the scene, we can choose a different mesh for any of the objects. So it's still a pyramid object, but I'm using the Suzanne mesh this time. And the object is represented by this tiny yellow dot, which is called the origin. So unlike dot to dot, in 3D we can actually modify these meshes to move the dots and lines and faces around as much as we want. And there are various ways to do that. The first way is using the edit mode. So we've got at the top left hand corner, we've got different modes in which we can use to edit the meshes that have been used by the currently selected object. So if I choose edit mode, we're going to be back to where we were before, and in here, we can select the different elements by clicking up here, so the vertex, the edge, or the faces, which we can access with the shortcuts 1, 2, and 3 on the keyboard. And we can move these around now, as we saw before, either the vertex, the edge, or the entire face. And we can also add more geometry in various different ways. So we can extrude, for example or we can subdivide. So if I choose all of the object by pressing A to select everything, right click and subdivide and press Shift R to repeat that operation several times. And now we can look at the second way we can manually edit a mesh. So we'll go from edit mode into sculpt mode. And then we can choose a tool and we can start modifying that geometry just by using the brushes or all the different tools we've got available in sculpt mode. We've got lots of different tools available, which we'll come to later. And as well as being able to manually modify the mesh, we can also do it automatically by using any of the object's modifiers. So we can open up the currently selected object's modifiers, and then we've got various ones in here, which will then modify that object's current mesh. For example, we can use the mirror, and then we can change the properties of the modifier to control the result that we're going to get. And the effect of the modifier will only be visible on the current object unless we apply the modifier, in which case it will actually change the mesh scene-wide so that any other objects that are using that same mesh will get the modified version. Or to discard it, you just press the X and that will delete the modifier completely. Another way we can modify the mesh is to use a physics simulation. Shift A and I'll add a plane. I'll move that down a bit and scale it up. And we'll make this a collision object in the physics panel. So each object has got its own little panel, got physics options for it. And then I'll use the physics properties of the pyramid to indicate that it's a cloth. And then if we play this back, that'll drop down and we've got a, a cloth simulation. So the object is now being modified by a physics simulation rather than manually or with a modifier. And we can also get access to different things like wind or vortex. Let's try vortex. We'll turn that right up. Play that back now, you'll see we're getting a different physics simulation based on the 
influence of this vortex that we've just added. The next way we can automatically modify the mesh is by using other objects in the scene. And for this course, we're actually going to be using bones. So for example, Shift A, and I'm going to add a armature, which is basically a different type of object that can only contain bones instead of meshes. And now you see this gives us one bone, which I can move into place. And then use edit mode to add and modify bones. So we've got a few more bones. And then very simply, all we do is parent the object to the skeleton, the bones underneath. And then any modifications I make to those bones will also affect the geometry, which is parented to them. And then, of course, we can animate the bones by capturing the position of them at different points in time along the timeline at the bottom here by basically moving the bone how we want it. And then we can record its position with a keyframe, this little yellow dot. And then we can record different positions of the bones on different frames until finally we can play it back and we've got an animation. And then once we've created an object and modified its mesh to create the shape that we want, we can then color it in by applying different materials to different faces on the mesh and then modifying the parameters of those materials to emulate real life material. And then we can set up a world environment for lighting and reflections and then turn on the cycles render engine to make it look realistic. So hopefully that very quick overview has given you a little bit of context to make the prospect of learning 3D a little bit less daunting, and in the next part, we'll be downloading Blender.